Burro was walking through a local park, looking for a place to fill his water bag. He found a drinking fountain near a picnic table that sat underneath a huge willow tree. After his water bag was full, he filled his hand with water and held it up to the east. Thank you, Mother Earth, for giving me your life blood to keep my body and spirit strong. A couple of young boys were watching their friends playing basketball when they heard what the native man said. John and Keith turned to watch him. Burro replied, for my ancestors, and then poured the handful of water on the ground. John and Keith looked at each other and then watched the native man drink for a long time. Why do you do that? I don't know. Burro wiped his mouth and went to sit at the picnic table. As he sat down, he saw the two young boys watching him. Burro smiled at them as he placed his backpack on the table. Suddenly, he felt his power. Pictures of the future flashed quickly in his mind. He knew it was very important that he talk with these young men. Hello, nephews. Do you know of any decent-priced motels around here? The boys started walking towards the picnic table, just as Burro was hoping they would. Why do you call us nephew? I'm pretty sure we're not related. In my tribe, that's the respectful way to address others who are younger than you. Kids younger than me call me uncle. Well, I'm John, and this is my friend Keith. Have a seat, John and Keith. It would be helpful to me if you can tell me where things are around here. John and Keith sat down. It didn't take long for them to begin talking comfortably with Burro. They told him where a good priced motel was and where he could find a grocery store. John and Keith had many questions for him. They learned how to say his name and how to say hello in Burro's tongue. Burro told them one story and then another. Time passed quickly as they were all enjoying themselves. The young teens didn't know that Wind Spirit was speaking to Burro through his power. It was getting close to noontime when two young women walked by. They were both wearing bathing suits and walking to the local swimming pool at the park. After the girls had walked by, John spoke up first. Those girls are fine. The brunette had a better body. Do you know those young ladies? They both replied, no. Do you really think that a woman's beauty is on the outside? They both nodded and smiled. When a woman is creative, imaginative, and has a great mind that seeks knowledge, that makes her intelligent. When a woman is confident with her body, no matter her size, that makes her sexy. But when a woman has a kind and caring heart, that makes her beautiful. To find a woman who has all three qualities is a woman I would want to marry. Let me tell you a story that my mother told me when I was almost your age. She noticed that I was starting to look at girls the same way you two are now. When I was young, my mother taught me a valuable lesson. She told me, when you're looking for a woman, look for a good cake. We stood at the opening of the Valley of the Seven Warriors, where I grew up. She said, if I were to go out into the field and pick up one of those cow patties 
and decorate it with beautiful white and red frosting. I could put big beautiful flowers made of icing too, and then place it in a beautiful box. Everyone who saw it would want that cake. So you see, my son, no matter how beautiful it is, it's still an um poo poo cake. If you find yourself a real cake, it won't matter how it looks on the outside. It will always be beautiful because it is made with love. Buro looked at the faces of the young men. He could see they were thinking about what he had said. You're right. It would be best to look at a girl's personality and not just her body or her face. <laughs> you can have all the dogs, John. I'll take all the babes. Buro listened to the teens arguing. He could see that John had learned a valuable lesson, just as he had when he was a boy. Finally, Buro interrupted them. Let me ask you both a question. Whether you decide to find you a real or an um poo poo cake, which one do you think you might be to her? John and Keith just stared at Buro, as this thought had never occurred to them. Which one do you think a real cake would deserve? She already knows her worth. As I said, she is intelligent. But on my many journeys on Mother Earth, I've seen too many um poo poo cakes on both sides. I've seen real cake women having to settle for um poo poo men, because most men only care about themselves. In our tribe, women are sacred, as they know their worth. They don't walk around demanding others to see them as sacred just because they're women. They have earned it during their baking time. During the time of my warrior training with my elders, I learned many good lessons during my baking time. When I was ready to come out of the oven, I was ready to be a good cake. Now is the time for you both to reflect on these words and decide which cake you want to be. When you're done baking, that is when you'll know which cake you deserve. You'll know which cake deserves you. Well, I'm going to be beefcake then. Dang it, Keith. How come I never saw how much of an um poo poo cake you can be? The two young men started arguing again. When Keith had enough, he got up from the picnic table, yelling. Screw you, John. And screw this dumb Indian. He don't know anything. I'm out of here. Buro and John watched Keith walking away. His anger came off of him like your breath on a cold winter's day. Buro heard Inyoshe's voice in the wind, saying how John had learned the lesson and his future would now change. Sorry about my friend. He can be mean sometimes. Boro smiled and nodded his head. Well, how long are you planning to stay? John felt the wind blow gently through the tree. He couldn't hear the whispers that came in the wind. I'm looking for work, so I guess I will be here at least a month. Great, you have a lot of cool knowledge. Mind if I hang around with you while you're here? That would be nice, nephew. That would give me time to teach you about walking in beauty. Awesome. It's always good to learn something new, especially when I'm still baking. Buro smiled and grabbed his bag. I'd better go find that place to stay. I'll come with you. You can tell me what walking in beauty means. John stood up and followed Buro past the drinking fountain where he first saw him. 
so far, nephew. You're baking well. Thanks, uncle. I'm Dakenya Montoya, creator, writer, artist, and musician for Apache Stealth. If you're new to Apache Stealth, you should start with the first story. Thanks for watching, and please like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss the next story.